Hi. Today I want to talk to you about the way that I think about approaching a lino cup and where I begin. It's a little bit difficult and it's a little bit of an abstract concept, so I'll do my best. But to start with some practicalities, since you saw this lino cup um, previously, I have mounted it to some MDF to fit into the press. If you watched my video about the printing press, you'll have seen the frame and realised that I need a backing board to lock the lino into the frame. So I've mounted it to a piece of MDF. In our film about hacks for hand printing, we'll talk about different backings and, and how to use them. But for now, it's stuck to MDF. Now, it's stuck using a carpet tile adhesive, so the kind of glue you get in a DIY store for sticking down carpet tiles, cork tiles, things like that. What you don't want is the sort of glue that does grouting as well. I know that because I made that mistake. So you want to go for something that's for sticking down carpet tiles. And you do need, if you're going to use a printing press, to stick the lino to the board with glue rather than using bits of tape, which is another thing we'll look at in the hacks film. For If you use tape to stick it down and a printing press, what will happen is that you run the risk of getting strange oblongs showing up on your print um, because of the tape, because the tape raises the lino fractionally and the pressure is great enough for that fractional raise to um, end up showing as a darker patch on your print. Don't do it, I've done it, it's not good. So I've stuck it to the board and you can see I've got lines here at the edges and I've been careful to centre the lino. If you remember, I'm going to be printing onto a piece of paper that has a decal all around it and the, the lino. So there's no way of trimming the paper if I want to keep the decal. So for this print, it's really important to get the print centred so that it sits nicely on the paper because we have no wiggle room for trimming off if it's crooked. And we'll look at that better in another film. So it's centred. It's, it's stuck down and now I want to tell you a couple of design things that I thought about when I was working with this. So this has no edges, this print. Its feature is showcasing the paper basically. It's that lovely Kitakata paper from the Awagami Paper Factory. And I wanted to showcase the paper and so I didn't want any edges um, at the edges of the print. That sounds mad, doesn't it? But do you know what I mean? Cut off edges at the edges of the print because I don't want to have a disconnect between a, a straight edge to the print and then the decal. And I'll show you an example of a print where I have lots of space and a cut off edge. So um, this print here, um, which is called Fresh Grass, you can see there is a big white space there and then there are edges and I use quite white space quite a lot in my prints and I quite like the abstract quality of it. Again, I think that has a lot to do with my time in Japan and looking at Japanese work. Um, but here there's quite a strong edge and I'm happy with that because this print is not about the paper, it'll have a mount that comes up to the edge and that's absolutely fine. With a print like this on a deckled paper, it's important that the whole thing is flowing. So that's why I've not gone for any edges. So now I've got the first impression cut, I need to think about the order. And this is something, the order of how you print the layers is something that people ask me about all the time. And I can't emphasize enough how much practice is important because there isn't a magic formula to this. So my thinking here is that I want a very transparent blue sky and I want some white for the snow. And so I have to think about, do I print white and then blue on top of white or do I go with the blue first and then the white. So with this paper, which is coloured, I'm going to have to use white ink to create the white snow. 
So I have to lay down some ink and that white ink is going to be opaque so that it shows up nicely on the paper. So if I were to print that opaque white ink as my first layer, because that's the palest colour and we all know that with lino cut, traditionally you start from pale and you work towards dark. If I put that layer of opaque white down, then great, it'll show the snow, but it's going to kill the transparency of the blue. So if I print my transparent blue layer over the white, it's going to be really badly affected by white underneath. Whereas if I print it onto the uh, Kitakata paper, then that paper will sort of glow through the blue and it will have all that lovely transparency that I want in the sky. So obviously I'm going to have to print the blue layer first. So if I'm going to print that blue layer first, I need to think about the white ink and how it might be impacted by the blue. Now, for me, it's quite an easy decision because I'm dealing with distances here. I've got far hills and a foreground. So in the foreground, I know I want nice bright white and to um, have that really shine. So in actual fact, having blue at the back is a bonus because it might knock that white back a little bit. Probably not very much, but it'll just knock it back a little bit and take the brilliance off it. So when I ink up, I'm not just thinking about inking ink all over the whole piece of the lino. Here, I'm going to ink the blue, but I'm going to ink the blue and keep it up here. Because that way, I kind of have the bonus that when I put the white ink on, the opaque white ink on, that any blue showing through it will have the effect of distancing these hills. So that's the order I'm going to start in, but I don't have a master plan. I never plan my colours, I just let them evolve. I think that's another thing that either you're like me and you find that really liberating or it fills you with panic. And if you're a planner and you like to work out, I'm going to have six colours and this is the order and that's how I'm going to do it, great. Doesn't work for me because I find that I work best when I'm mixing colours and I'm, I'm printing, I'm looking at what's there and thinking, what do I do next with my reduction cut? And also, I find that quite often my initial ideas evolve as I'm working. And if I had a game plan to stick to, then I might not feel as free as I do to just like make decisions on the hoof, decide as I go along. So there's a lot of this print that I haven't thought about yet and that I'll come to when I come to it. So I'm, at the moment, I'm just thinking that transparent blue sky and that white area. So what I'm going to do is to get the blue printed get the sky sorted out and then move on to the white and then we'll worry about stuff like the tree and how we do the shadows and things like that. So it's very much a movable feast. I think the main thing to take away from this video is perhaps that it's not simple making decisions about the order that you print in, especially if like me you work a lot with extender and transparency and um, I'm not and oil-based inks because oil-based inks give you the freedom to work light over dark as well as um, working in the traditional way where you start with the light and work towards the dark. You can actually reverse that a bit with oil-based inks. So it's all a movable feast and that's partially why I go with the flow. So as you follow me through the journey of this print, hopefully it will show you that this is all very flexible and loose and it's by no means a set pattern to the way that I work. The final thing to say, and I forgot to mention it, is you'll see that my print is now a very irregular shape. And when I've cleared it out, basically what I've done is I've chopped off the bits of lino that I absolutely don't need. And again, that's to do partially with uh, the fact that if it's not there, it can't print by mistake on the paper. And it's partially to do with a little adaption we've had to do to the frame for registration. And that's something that I will show you as we get printing. So I, I hope this has been a useful video. It's always kind of a 
tricky thing to talk about. So forgive me if it didn't make much sense, but I think it will as I go along. And I hope you'll keep joining me for these films. Thanks very much.